Hey drummers, so in today's session we're going to look at the left hand. How we hold this left hand in the pipe band drumming world. It's what we call underhand grip and when you combine it with the overhand on the right it's called traditional grip, okay? So you'll see lots and lots and lots of pipe band drummers holding it like this. You'll also see some of the world's most phenomenal of all time drum kit players holding their sticks like this. And certainly some of my best students who went on to become world champions, but also be world class as drum kit players, they've really utilized this to the max. So I want to look at that and I want to support you with that. Give me a like below or a comment if you've struggled with this left hand at any point. If you find it tricky, if you find it stiff, it was hard to move forward. You're finding it hard to play your Radim cues cleanly and, and clearly. You're finding maybe rolls starting on the left hand a bit awkward. Comment, like, below. Let me know if you're in that category. There's lots and lots of people that definitely experience that. But don't worry, we're going to start digging into it. And if you've been looking for help with your right hand, there's another video tutorial which I've done as part of this channel. So make sure and check it out if you want to look at the right hand grip. So today we're going to focus on the left. We'll get rid of the right hand stick. So we've got this underhand grip and I want you to learn how to use three aspects of it. If you've got pen and paper, guys, definitely take a few notes. Feel free to share this with other drummers if you're teaching or you want to take it along to your band practice. This stuff is the stuff I wish I had known much earlier. It would have saved me a lot of uh, practice hours where I was maybe practicing and trying to perfect the wrong thing. So these are things I want to share with you uh, from my 20 plus years of competing at the top level and um, from teaching for, for almost 20 years as well. So let's take a look at what we do. So first of all, we did talk about this in the stick position video tutorial. If you haven't seen it, you can check out the full stick position in terms of how we hold the stick. So make sure you've got it sitting in here, a quarter of the way up the stick, flat thumb, right? We're gonna talk about this thumb in a second. Chilled fingers, right? They, we don't want any tension or bent, this kind of claw effect. We don't want them pushed on the stick. And then, so the relaxed fingers, and then your ring finger is chilled out, relaxed, as a way to support the stick underneath. So I'll just bring it up so you can see it a bit closer. Okay, so that's what we're looking at. Flat thumb, not this bent ridge. So flat thumb, chilled out fingers, right? Not pushed on the stick. And you've got a supporting stick under, a supporting finger underneath. So that's what we're looking at there. Let's give you it from all angles so you can really get a feel for it. And if you're using, I use the KP2 drumstick, the Jim Kilpatrick stick. Uh, just because I really enjoy it, it's super consistent. I've used it for the majority of my career. So if you're holding that stick, um, my thumb is just ahead of, you can actually see the gym name has been rubbed out because I hold it there so much. So my thumb sits over that. Okay, so that's what we're looking at there, guys, right? And in terms of angle of the, the stick, we don't want this. We want this, okay? Not that, we want that. And it's just gonna give you much more control over the stick, it's so important. So let's take a look at what we do here. So there's three things that we wanna do. And the same on the right hand, we did those in the right hand video lesson. If you haven't checked it out, you can. So three things you wanna do, and I see so many drummers that restrict themselves to playing with one dimension. Down here, we wanna relax. We wanna lift our sticks, we wanna play with it, we wanna have fun. So let's make sure that we equip ourselves with the basic tools. If you're a novice drummer, you're gonna enjoy this. If you're intermediate, you're gonna learn something. If you're at the top end of your game, this might help you just tweak something that helps you take things up to that next level, okay? So first things first, we wanna use the elbow, right? So learning to bend the elbow, lift that stick up, up to your head. Don't be afraid. I see so many people restrict their playing to here. Lift it right up. Nice clear strokes as you come down. Striking the middle of the drum or the pad. That's something you gotta work on. Okay, so that's all elbow movement, right? Next thing is the wrist. You're not gonna get as much power compared to what you're doing with your elbow. It's gonna be much, much smaller. There's still accent power there, but we can get a bit more speed going now. And I'll just show you that from angles too. It's probably helpful for you to see what's happening at all those angles. Okay, and then the last bit, which is the trickiest bit, I'll just move around a little bit so you can see it. That's all fun technique. Okay, so just trying to let you see all the different angles and approaches. So, when do we use what? So if we're doing a big accent at the start of a part, 
we'll use a massive big elbow, elbow movement. If we're doing a single run, we'll use wrist. Uh, with accents, you know, we use the wrist. If we're doing something with a little bit more speed, a uh, single run maybe, with no accents there, you can see how the, the thumb does the work. Both hands are using just fingers and thumb there. So let's talk about the thumb a little bit more. Now, what we want to do is think about where the thumb moves from. I remember people trying to tell me to do this. This is how you, you move the stick with your thumb. Incorrect. It's not from there. It comes from here, right? That's You can see that how that's moving. That's where the thumb movement is, comes from. Now, we want to hold the thumb flat across here. If we hold it here, your thumb is sitting over the pivot point where your stick rests, right? Now, what I'm going to get you to do, if you've got a door close to you, I want you to go to the door. Go to the door. Take your phone with you if you're on your phone. And I want you to try and open the door from the hinges. From the hinges. You're not allowed to touch the handle. The door has to be closed shut. I want you to open it from the hinges. Good luck. It's not going to happen, right? For us to open the door, we got to go to the handle, which is further away from the pivot point, which is your hinge, to move the, to move the door open. So the same with the, the stick. If we do that, we bring a thumb back, we sit over the pivot point, which makes us use our wrist. We want to be sitting forward from that pivot point. So we're sitting there, pivot points back here. Then we can actually move the stick. So I want you to get into the habit. We'll get rid of that right stick. If we open our hand right up like this, stick sitting there nicely, just chilling. And I want you to manipulate it with the other finger and just bounce it. Try down there. It's going to be super hard to keep it going. Bring it back up. Now about an inch, two centimeters to an inch away from the pivot point is where it's most natural. Stop there. Look where your finger's sitting. Put your thumb flat down. Look what happens. It sits over that exact point. That's where your thumb naturally wants to sit to propel the stick. Okay? And so a great exercise I would encourage you to do, and think of it like bouncing a basketball. Bounce it with your finger on the other hand. Move it out of the way. Bounce it with your thumb. And just keep... Keep this all nice and open. Don't worry about getting too perfect right away with it. Okay, so I'm just using a little bit of bounce technique there to try and get the point across that we can get the thumb going, okay? So what I want you to focus on is just some basic exercises to build your stick technique on your left. So great exercise. groups of four. And just start it slow, build it up as you're confident. Now, as you're playing that, the one thing I want you to think, as you're just using this as a play along, I want you to focus on the quality. Nice, consistent accent followed by three even strokes. Sometimes we get this. It's not really controlled, right? So we want to focus on getting the control. Don't worry about speed. Speed will come. Get the control. You should be relaxed. No tension. Okay, so I want you to build that up. And don't ever feel like you've got to use your thumb to play singles. If you can do that, you've done the work. And now you're getting the rewards for that. That's great. But I know great players at all levels who use just practically just wrist to play singles and they're world class players. So don't feel like you have to do it. I'm here to tell you, you don't have to use your fingers and your thumb to play singles. If you can, great. It's definitely something I would encourage. It opens up a whole new realm, but you don't have to do it to be great and to be world class at all. So hopefully that session has helped you guys. And as always, I'll remind you, jump across to the free Facebook group, Pipe Band Drumming on Tap. The link is below. In there, I do frequent masterclasses. I do Q&A sessions where you can get to interact and ask questions. If you need to or want to, pop a question below. I'll be sure to get back to you soon. But enjoy your drumming. Thanks for tuning in. And hopefully, that was super helpful for you today.